Hello there. So I have seen whispers in the comments of people asking what mods I use in my playthroughs. So today, my good survivor, we are going through the 10 mods that I like to use in almost every playthrough that I do. These are just my personal choices that I feel will fit a variety of playstyles and is my opinion of which mods will help you. If there are different mods that you enjoy, why not pop them in the comments so other survivors can expand on their horizons. I try to keep my mods as immersive as I can, with a few exceptions. If you stick around until the end, there is a cheeky honorable mention that I have a feeling that you will enjoy. That said, let us begin. First up on the list is an absolute gem of a mod called Common Sense by Braven. As the name suggests, Common Sense adds things that by rights should be in the base game. Among some of the features that it includes are allowing crowbars to pry open doors, garages, windows, and even vehicle trunks. To make this a bit more balanced, it's influenced by your strength level, your panic, and your current profession. Naturally, burglar would have a higher chance to pry open a door. No surprises there. The mod also highlights vehicle parts to show their current condition, which helps a ton when you accidentally hug a tree on a road trip and can check at a glance how damaged your engine is, for example. Everything can be checked at a glance, which is a huge quality of life improvement in of itself. Allows you to open canned food with sharp tools instead of just can openers. You know, if you're unlucky enough to find one. Gives more versatility to spear crafting, allowing you to craft spears with brooms and mops, and even allowing you to use ropes, sheets, and more to attach items onto them. For the tailors out there, you can rip clothing using a sharp tool, like a knife, instead of wearing out your valuable scissors, because as the mod says, it just makes sense. If you are someone who generally enjoys playing vanilla, this mod adds in features that will make your life a little bit easier but won't drastically change your experience enough to make you feel like you're playing a modded game. Autos are Motor Club and, well, most of IBRS's mods add a ton of versatility into your playthrough. For the record, the entire time I use this mod, I refer to it as Autostar. So I guess today I learned something. It adds a ton of transport options from motorbikes, in case you wanted to roleplay Daryl from The Walking Dead, quad bikes, and even jet skis. I've always wondered why water transport isn't a thing in the base game, despite having a substantial dock in Louisville and being right next to a massive river. The base cars in the game are great, sure, and there are quite a few options to suit your needs, but even in the 90s, surely there should be motorbikes. One of the other Autosar mods, Autosar Atelier Bus Tuning, also adds in buses into the game. If you enjoy the nomadic playstyle, these buses are able to be kitted out into the ultimate zombie mowing machine with a metric ton of storage space to boot so that you would never have to settle down in one location again. This next mod is so tiny, but adds something that makes your life infinitely easier. Has been read by Pepe Pepe Pale, <laughs> I never get tired of saying that name, tells you which books have been read, have not been read, or have been read halfway. If you're like me, you tend to forget which skill books you have stashed in your base storage, so you just end up grabbing pretty much every skill book you can find, just in case. This mod helps you see, at a glance, which ones you actually need, so it's useful for not filling up your inventory with unnecessary skill books when out and about. Next up is a mod that I added to my playthroughs recently, and well, I've never looked back. Simple lockpicking by Meeper the Great 99 adds a realism friendly ish ability to pick locks using a paperclip and a screwdriver. Some may feel this is a bit cheesy, as every character can essentially lockpick. If you feel it's a bit too strong, you can turn up the chance to fail the lockpicking in the sandbox options to make it a bit more balanced. It works on most doors, and the best part, it works on vehicles too. At least now we have a use for all those random paper clips that we collect during our travels. Next up is a mod that is a fantastic option for both newer players and experienced veterans alike. Weapon Condition Indicator by Noctus Falco allows you to see the current condition of weapons in your hotbar and takes out the hassle of having to go into your inventory each time to check if your weapon is at its breaking point. Just a heads up that it does require mod options so don't forget to subscribe to that one before picking this up. It also adds the option of seeing how much ammo is in your current gun magazine, how long the batteries will last in your flashlight, and the best part, it's fully customizable. So if you feel these little tidbits of information are too overpowered, you can customize it in any way that you see fit. 
Such a simple quality of life improvement that goes a long way, especially when you're knee deep in combat and you need to quickly swap out to another weapon instead of finding out the tough way that you're about to be weaponless. In the vanilla game, items like fireman's clothes, bulletproof vests and shoes cannot be repaired, much to the dismay of many survivors out there. This makes it challenging because you have to keep hunting for more and more of these to replace the ones that you're wearing. The mod Repair Any Clothes by Johnny Dollar does exactly as it says on the tin. It enables you to repair them, so you don't have to keep searching for new clothing pieces. This extends to the rarer clothing pieces that also cannot be repaired. For those of you wondering if it works with modded clothing, it does indeed. So the clothing world is your oyster to repair. Pretty solid mod that has accompanied me on almost every playthrough and has helped satisfy my fashionista craving on more than one occasion. Quality of life mod for my fellow loot goblins out there. Better sorting by Chobits Crazy replaces the item category tags with simpler and easier to see categories to make loot management a breeze and is, if I may say, one of my personal favorites. Instead of being faced with vague item tags like materials, weapons and more, the mod breaks it down into skill specific items. Instead of being labeled as a material, Thread receives the crafting tailoring tag. Firearms receive the weapon firearm tag, and melee weapons receive the weapon melee tag. Clothing is further broken down into accessories, headwear, and more. These small tag changes help you manage your loot crates better, instead of just dumping everything into random crates or spending ages painstakingly sorting items into various crates. It's a worthwhile consideration that is also realism friendly, so if you generally enjoy playing with little to no mods, this one is sure to sneak its way into your mod list. The trait system in Project Zomboid is quite in depth, but lacks a few key traits that give love to some skills. If you thought that there were enough traits to pick from, I have got some news for you. Enter more traits created by Hypno Toad Trance, Fash Deck, and Music Maniac. This mod is popular amongst other content creators who enjoy doing challenge based playthroughs, like the Amputee Challenge or starting with a broken leg. It adds more positive trade options that are on the cheaper side of the spectrum and actually provide useful benefits to your build, despite only costing between 1-3 to three points. These new additions allow you to fill up those last few remaining points with traits that would actually be worthwhile for your playthrough. Aside from the wealth of positive traits that it provides, it also gives some additional negative traits for those of you who are looking for a novel challenge for your next playthrough. Now, this mod is one that has been with me from the start of my modded playthrough journey and I have never looked back. Proximity Inventory by MX allows you to see the contents of every container around you in one menu. It removes the pain of having to sift through 20 crates to find that one tube of wood glue or 40 zombie corpses to find the one clothing item that you need. While not a mod that I would consider strictly necessary in a playthrough, it does make looting a lot less tedious and makes loot runs smoother, allowing you to loot everything in a radius from one menu. Using the mod options mod, you can customize it to show only zombie corpses or every container. All in all, a must have for all you hoarders out there. This one is not a mod that I would consider a must have for every playthrough, but boy, has it been helpful. The mod Better Flashlights by Enobdercus, I hope I didn't butcher that name, adds 18 different flashlights into the game, all with varying levels of intensity or some variety. The best part of this mod is that you can place them on your tool belt instead of in your hand, freeing you up to use other items. If you don't want to bind a flashlight onto your tool belt, it adds the option to get a neat mining helmet, which combines the utility of having a light with head protection. Nice. For those of us who enjoy heading out on nighttime missions, this one is a must have in my opinion. Unfortunately, your friends cannot see the beam from your flashlight if it's on your belt, but that is a game issue according to the mod author. You can get around this by equipping it in your hand, which is a small price to pay when some of the flashlights in this mod essentially have the power of a small sun. As an honorable mention, this one is great for leveling one of our most click intensive skills the one and only tailoring. We have all felt how mind-numbing the process can be, so I would like to formally introduce you to the auto sewing mod by Chernobyl. It allows you to train tailoring with a single click instead of having to spend ages adding and removing patches from clothing just to gain one level. Great for avoiding carpal tunnels and saving a few brain cells, but this one comes down to personal preference. Gather a bunch of materials, click once, 
and go make yourself a cup of coffee while the mod does the work for you. That's it for some of the mods that I feel will help you without breaking your immersion too much. Leave your thoughts in the comments below if you found any of these useful or mods that you consider a must have in your playthroughs. Thank you for watching Survivor. If you enjoyed the video, why not drop a like and subscribe? It helps a lot. As always, if there's anything else you'd like me to cover, pop it in the comments below. Good luck out there Survivor, and I will see you soon.